Welcome back for part two of Resin Basics. Now that we've explored what you need, let's see what's involved with a basic pour. Always pour hardener first. This is the thinner fluid and will allow for better mixing. I'm using a general purpose resin, which is the one to one. I'll be doing a larger pour of multiple coasters and I want to slightly overshoot the amount needed. So I'm using the larger silicone mixing cup. I need 400 milliliters. So I need 200 milliliters of the hardener first. Next, I add an equal volume of resin, bringing it up to 400 milliliter mark. Proper portions are critical. If the ratio is off, the resin will not cure properly. So take your time here and don't guess. Use the markings. The resin tends to pull in the center. This is normal. Mix slowly. Too vigorous will introduce lots of bubbles. Use circular motions, ensuring to scrape the sides and bottom well. The mixture will get cloudy. Don't panic. Keep stirring until it is clear and there are no striations or ribbons in the mixture. This usually takes several minutes. It's better to err on the side of mixing longer than to rush it. If there are a lot of bubbles, let it sit for a few minutes to let them rise to the top and pop. Be mindful of your resin's pot life. This is your work time before it starts heating up and curing. If it remains in too tall or deep of a container too long, it can flash cure. Like, uh, this. Oops. Don't make yourself an award for learning your pot life the hard way. Pun intended. Most companies list this range in their instructions. Now that we have mixed our resin, we can add our mica powder. I'm using rose gold for this set of coasters. The intensity of the color depends on how much you put in. This is a larger amount of resin, so I need a good scoop. Now slowly mix it in, watching for it to thoroughly distribute into the resin. Once it's in the mixture, you can let it sit for a few minutes to let the bubbles settle out. The color will often change a bit as it cures. Sorry, no shortcut I know of in learning how much, other than trial and error. I have my molds on metal plates set in a silicone matte lined tray to make them easier to move. Trying to move a filled mold, especially a wide one, is difficult unless you have it on something hard. For a solid colored pour, start on one edge of the mold and carefully pour enough to fill the bottom letting the resin spread. This will help to prevent bubbles from settling. You can gently scrape the edges of the bottom of the mold to free any settling bubbles. Proceed through the rest of the molds. Some bubbles will rise over the curing. The more you can work out to the surface now, the better. Top off the mold. There are two methods if you want to eliminate the last of the visible bubbles. Spritz some rubbing alcohol over the top and it will pop anything on the surface. You can also use a heat gun. Keep it at a distance from the molds, always in motion to keep from overheating and melting the molds. You can leave the mold where you poured it to let it cure. Or I place the tray into my leveled hot box and seal it up to keep the heat in. This system keeps the temp in the 70s, which is the ideal curing range for my resin. Otherwise, the basement shop is in the 60s, which would risk a more rubbery cure. Now comes the patience. Sorry, but this is the process that takes a while. Cure time for this resin is 12 to 16 hours usually. During this phase, the mica powder will migrate and settle out. This will be more evident in multiple colored pores. I know I keep saying this, but we'll get to those later. Before removing your gloves, clean up any stirring implements with a wipe or you can use rubbing alcohol and paper towels. Make sure to remove all resin. This will keep it from building up or creating colored bits that can become deposited in other batches. For reusable silicone cups, you can let the resin drippings cure and then crack them out. Or you can also wipe it like the tools before it cures. Both techniques work. For the plastic measuring cups, always wipe clean and then wash with soap and water. 
Resin will bond with the surface permanently if you leave it. But whatever you do, never rinse uncured resin down your sink. It will cause a serious blockage when it comes up everything and cost you a plumbing visit. After enough time has passed, check on the curing. It should pass the click test. This means when you tap it with something hard, it literally clicks. The surface should be smooth and not sticky. When you pick it up, it shouldn't flex. Gently remove the cast from the mold. Silicone is a flexible material, but be careful not to tear it. There is a chance that even though the resin is hard, it's still slightly pliable, i.e. not fully cured. It's a good idea to set items on a flat level surface for a day or two just to be safe. Some resins fully cure faster than others. Some can take 72 hours or more. Don't forget to put your molds away. Now enjoy your project. This is the basics of working with resin. In future videos, I'll be demonstrating how to work with different kinds of molds, color combinations, working with alcohol inks, layering alcohol paintings, and more advanced techniques. I hope you'll keep joining me for Resonating Through Art.